portion of this episode is sponsored by World of Warships, and I get to tell you about that and this a little bit later. Now, on with the show. Hey, it's Joel. Nothing on the desk because apparently I have a delivery showing up. There it is. Wait, the delivery's here. Delivery. Oh. Look at that. It's a Mark IV. Hi, Hi. Joe. Hello, everyone. <laughs> So I brought you the brand new original Prusa Mark IV to play with. I appreciate that. I didn't know I was going to get it personally delivered. This is fantastic. Can you stay and help me get it out of the box? Uh, for a tiny bit because I have to catch my flight. That's fair. Oh, look at this. Right out of the box. Right out of the box. This is happy printing. Happy printing. Those are fantastic. It's got a cheat sheet on the back. Look at that. Yes. I didn't even know about that. The most important oh. thing. <laughs> the Harbour Bears. Here are notes for you. Oh, notes for me? But you're here, so I don't need these, right? Yes. Here we have the sheets. Oh, how many sheets does it come with? Uh, it comes with uh, one, but this is uh, to play with all of them. Oh, sweet. I get to show you the steel satin sheet. I get to show you the steel sheet. TXT, what does that mean? Uh, textured one. Textured steel sheet right there, and then just a steel sheet. Ah, oh, I love these stickers. 3D printing handbook. Oh, look at that, Written. and it's updated. It's got the Mark IV on it. And remember to read the manuals, people. <laughs> and here uh, is our signature. Oh, here uh, we go. Test testing report from all the parts. Yes. This is still a part of the packaging and assembly of the Mark IV. Yeah, exactly. Oh, this is exciting. It's always exciting getting one of these out of the box. I'm not going to lie to you. Hello. Ah, look at that. Boom! This is the original Prusa i3 Mark IV 3D printer right here. You have the box with the tools. That's right. Now it's assembled, so I don't have to assemble anything. But this comes with, looks like the spool holder, yeah, and the filament guide, the USB stick. This has probably one of my favorite tools of all time, this red-handled screwdriver. I love this thing. And Ooh. the assembled one comes with a spool of Crucimen Galaxy Black. Galaxy Black. The best filament ever. So this is new. Uh, this is like a filament guide. Yeah, it is. Uh, as we increase uh, Z height a tiny bit, when, when you are printing all the way up, it just helps if you have Really full spools. Ah, oh, I so see. So it doesn't we, oh, jump over. It, it, sometimes it would jump over. Yes. Okay. I know protopasta spools are some of the ones that are filled really close to the top. So this should mitigate the filament jumping from the top yes. of the spool. Oh, okay. So uh, it comes with a test print from the factory. Okay. So we just get it off. The best way is like to bend in and try not to touch the bed because then you don't need to clean it. This is a nice PEI sheet just waiting for us. Three, two, one. And it's oh, alive. Look at that screen. I love a nice colorful screen up front. So we're just gonna skip the first run steps because there's a beautiful first run experience video on the Prusa YouTube channel. Prusa does have to head to the airport and if he misses his flight, it's on me. So we're gonna <laughs> go about things in a, in a slightly different way. So oh, look we, at that UI. So we just unload the filament. It ask, asks us which, which one we have there. So it's PLA and okay. It will preheat and unload the bit which we have here. Oh, okay. Then we will load a new one in. But yeah, we suggest everyone who gets the new machine to run through it because it checks if it doesn't, if it didn't get mangled in shipping. It checks the axis length, all the heaters, everything. So it is very important step. Okay, so this we we've just unloaded the filament, and it pooped it right out. Sweet. It's, yeah, it's out. So now we can go up here to load. Yes. And then, I'll prepare the and then plot. Start, start of the spool. And Loading filament in three, <laughs> two, one. There it goes. And it's going in. Oh, look at that. It's taking it. Ah, oh, it's brilliant. 
purging, loading, doing all sorts of fun stuff. It should start pooping something out here, maybe. Yeah. There it is, look at that. Just a tiny little bit of material is pooped out. Sweet. Is the color correct? It, yes. I would say yes. It is asking us this because when you are changing from one color to another, uh, you know, for example, from red to white, uh, you might right. still get like pink for quite some time, so you have a chance to purge more. I understand. If you're yeah. going from like red or blue to a white, I mean, that yes. takes a while. Okay, but I think yeah, we are we, we are, are good. fine. I'm gonna hit so, yes. Oh, so, so we're now, good to go. Now you can basically. I mean, wait. Fi wait. Find the. Oh, do, do not touch oh, it. Oh my goodness. You leave you it hanging? To, you have to be safe, but we can use the we, we can use the chest print to get it out. Uh. Safety first with Joseph Prusia. This is the first iteration that goes from SD card to USB stick. I've seen, you know, over over the years after a couple of years some of the people were in they were a little rough uh, with the SD card uh, uh, slots. I think it's better to use USB and uh, I'm game for that. Let's uh, print the uh, Robo Alpaca. Yeah, the Robo Alpaca. I've saw, I saw um, Uncle Jesse just show that off. Yes. And so now I get to show it off. This is Captain Bad Advice. A free 3D printable model from printables.com. An official model from World of Warships. Now, he's riding my robot dog because you can only get warships in the game. Are you ready for this? All right, Captain, you go have fun. I'm going to tell them about World of Warships. World of Warships is a free-to-play PC game. New content is released every month, including new ships, new in-game nations, and new ship classes. There are over 40 unique maps, each with their own dynamic weather. In the game, you can choose from multiple ship classes, including battleships, destroyers, submarines, and even aircraft carriers. Plus, World of Warships is even available on console systems. Go download World of Warships right now using the link in the description. During registration, use the code Popeye to get 500 doubloons, 1.5 million credits, 10 days of premium account, and the choice of the ships Langley, Phoenix, Wyoming, or Clemson after 15 battles. Again, go download World of Warships using the link in the description, and when registration happens, use code Popeye to get a ton of free stuff. Oh, hey, Captain. Glad to have you back. A big thanks to World of Warships for sponsoring this part of the episode, and now I'll have you right back to it. So the robot alpaca is gonna take more than seven hours. And obviously yeah. we don't have that much time because Joe's gotta get a flight to somewhere in the world. But Dude, we can at least Calgary. start this, and while this is going, I think we have time to kind of go over three really yes. cool new features, right? Yes. Okay, here we go. Starting the robot alpaca in three, two, one. Look at that, there's a little LED on the bottom. Yeah. Is that a status LED? It is a status LED and you can uh, you can program it, but I mean, it is 2023, everything has to have RGB. RGB LED everything, <laughs> yeah. How is this programmed? Is it can, is it M codes or G codes? Through G codes. Okay. But, you know, uh, by, by default it is uh, showing you when it's printing, if it has an error, it blinks red. Let's get to the new features uh, I, I love the most uh, about the machine. First is the load cell. This has to do with probing. Yeah, you can uh, you you can imagine uh, this is the uh, how digital scales work. Um, oh, I see. There's a little or stra strain gauge. Mm -hmm. It is right somewhere here be below the motor, and uh, basically we are probing with the tip of the nozzle against the surface. It's the uh, only way how to get it so precise because with with the induction sensors, you are probing for the metal underneath. Right. And then also you have the the the, uh, the trigger distance and the nozzle are two different things. So that's uh, why you had to do the life adjust Z and all of that. You always stuff. had to continually adjust the offset because yes. the, the the distance between the metal plate and the nozzle couldn't stay the same depending on your build surface. Yes, and even even with high grade 3M uh, glue and you know. Uh, proper uh, PEI sheets, there, there still might be like 10 micron variation when the tolerance is stack. I understand. So probing the surface is the, is the way to go. Okay. And you know, I had first prototype 12 years ago, even before a Prusa <laughs> research was a thing. 
But I finally, uh, I finally build up a team that I knew, I know we can, uh, we can, we can do it properly. So it's, it is not just an on-off. There is a high-speed analog readout from the load cell, and we basically train a little model so we even know if the probe is not successful. Just how the data are. Uh, well, the data follows a curve, a known yes. like a known curve. Yes. And you know, if the probe is not successful, it like tries to go a little bit to the side, wipe the nozzle, and do another one. And uh, so it is doing it at the safe temperature for all the surfaces. We finished, uh, we finished the probing, and soon we'll uh, we heat up to the uh, running temperature, and we will start the print. Oh, so the probing still happens when the bed is at the print temperature, but the nozzle yes. itself can be at a lower temperature for the... Yes. OK. And one uh, one little neat feature is that we are probing just where the model is. So yeah, I saw that. It's not the whole bed. It's very yeah. specifically just in the surface area that the model is covering. And I think we have a perfect first layer. Can I see? Yes. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that is so, so good. But we uh, still have Life Adjust Z in, mm -hmm. in case you really want to print on some funky surfaces, <laughs> uh, which are a little bit squishy. So you can, you can adjust oh, for see. that. Because we have a lot of crazy users printing on crazy stuff. Well, as an example, if you were to for, like take cardboard down, cardboard does have a little bit of a squish to it yes. when being probed compared to something like a metal sheet. So yeah. I would understand, you know, it's understandable that you might have to adjust that a little bit because the probe is expecting a very rigid surface. Yes, 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 that's, uh, that's the thing. And I'm thinking, you know, we will embrace a little bit. When, when I see the users uh, printing on super weird stuff, uh, I'm, I'm thinking about embracing it a little bit more and, you know, maybe having a special mode which lets you do like more, uh, more high res, uh, more probes. Ah, so okay. you could follow a more curved surface and some stuff like that, maybe. Oh, so you could, from the get go, possibly do non planar printing in a way. I would, like with a surface, theoretically yes, but you know we we haven't started. We're, 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 we're working on that. Just, I get it. I just, get it. I get yet. it. But uh, it's interesting to think about what the future could hold just because of that way of doing things. Yes, but you know I'm thinking maybe you can you know print on some uh, wooden handle, some some nice markings or something like that. Ah, something. that's a really interesting way to think about it. Yes, that's cool. Okay, well then, what's the second thing you got for me? Uh, the the second thing, which uh, it would be very difficult to demonstrate right now, but we have easy to change uh, nozzle. This is the V6 adapter. So then yes. your your nozzle, your heat break, all of it, all in one. Yes. I hope I will not break the print. So you can just put this up, and here you have thumb screws. You just uh, use your fingers, and then you can slide it out and the connectors for the, uh, for the heat cartridge and for the thermistor are here, so. Oh, so it's a very, it's not a, it's the wires aren't home run back yes. to the board. It yeah. is, there's a connector board up here. And yeah, we, okay. That is also one of the, the great little uh, improvements for, you know, repairability and user friendliness. Well, and for modding, probably, if people want to mod theirs, right? Uh, for, uh, for serviceability <laughs> and, <laughs> and repairability. Okay, service and repairability. And so this is a new standard. Yes. Okay. So, uh, but you do make an adapter. So this is a V6 adapter. So that means we could still use an E3D V6 standard nozzle. Yes. I um, when we started to develop it, I felt like we should not like, make people buy all the new nozzles again yeah. if they have some specialty nozzles they 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 already own. So we designed our system in a way that you can use all in ones from us, which mm -hmm. uh, I I love the fact that you know from uh, from my experience, a lot of users experience the big plastic blobs because they didn't tighten uh, tighten the heat break yes. against the and nozzle. Yes, it leaks out and it, it leaks it, out and cases yes. it. Okay, so I, I've done that a number of times. And as it as it is integrated on the standard uh, nozzles. Mm -hmm. Uh, it does not have a place to to leak. Okay. Uh, but at the same time, we can make adapters, 
which then act like you know standard uh, what, what, what you are used to from previous generations. That's cool. You can still you still have to do the uh, tightening up while when it's hot and. So okay, so you still have to do all the same things you would before. This is just an adapter yeah. to let you use the old stuff, but the new stuff is pretty decent in itself. Yes, but I mean you can use CHD with this. No, no, nothing is. Uh, oh. Yeah. Okay, that sounds fun. Okay, third thing. What's the third thing, Joseph? Um, I'm pretty proud about the the gearbox and the, uh, and especially the drive gear, because we have uh, one large diameter drive gear. A big one, right? Yeah, which is flat, because when you have uh, you, we, you need a little surface area. And what was done in the community before was, you know, two drive gears uh, driving it from the both sides. Right. So it was this, and they would do this. Yes. But then you, you had a groove in it, so on the outside of the diameter and on the inside of the groove, the, you know, the length per uh, revolution was a little bit different, so it was uh, mangling uh, the filament a little bit. Didn't um, um, uh, Mirage C, I think, wasn't that, that person on YouTube did a really good breakdown of Oh yeah, of the, of the extruder. It was fantastic. We'll put a link is, down in the description. It is an amazing video. Yeah. And we just have you know, giant rack here and two bearings uh, uh, pushing against it, so you have. Whew. So there's would, a lot more surface area of yeah. the drive gear connecting with the material. Yeah, I don't think it's uh, I don't think it's uh, in normal circumstances no, normal circumstances possible like to grind through filament. Oh, oh well, that's good to hear. Yeah. And does this uh, give any advantage when printing softer materials like TPUs? Uh, I would say yes, because. Uh, well, this way, when you were doing TPUs this way, you always had to kind of loosen that because else it would squish it and, and it wouldn't extrude at a, at a consistent pace. Yeah, but, you know, always with, with, uh, with the flexible materials, it is, you know, even what is the base material, if it's uh, TPU or s something else, you always want to, you know, check it when you, when, when you are uh, doing the first print with it. Okay and make sure maybe you know go a little bit slower and sure all the, okay so the typical things you would do with a with a softer yes. material follow that workflow yes. for this machine still but uh, as you know from our slicer we have presets mm -hmm. for for most of the stuff which is generally available so oh, and that's a good place to start then if yes. someone can start and kind of go from there wow cool yes well there's a lot of stuff on here that i'm going to get to play with and I know you have to head to the airport. Well, how about this? Anything else? Anything else you want to let people know about before you take off? I would just say enjoy 3D printing. There we go. You heard it from Joe himself. Dude, good to see you. Have Thank a safe you. travel. I, I mean, you have to leave right now, right? Yes. OK, get out of here. Go, <laughs> go, go. Care. I can't, I can't. I don't want to keep you, man. Love you, Joe. Safe travels. Bye. Uh, all right, well, this is the Robo Alpaca. It's gonna take a little more than seven hours to print. I'm gonna go home, say hi to my wife and kids, have a little bit of dinner. We'll be back to check this and then get a lot more prints done. I'll see you in a bit. So this is what was printing when we left this. And when Joe and Mickey were in town, I treated them to tacos for dinner. The Prusa meetup was a lot of fun here in Seattle. But really, I had the llama printing, this Robo Llama. The llama printed great. I mean, it looks fantastic, as it should. It's an example print from this machine. And then I set that print to go, the one that's on the build plate right there. It is a print in place crane. Recently, I attended the red carpet for the Transformers Rise of the Beasts movie premiere in Brooklyn, New York. And before I left, I hit print. I didn't even verify the first layer. I just hit print. And it's a fabulous model, absolutely fabulous. You can print it all at once. It is, it is a crane. There is a little, a little dial here that comes out and it's got like a, an indentation of where a little clip clips around to hold it in place. And then on the bottom, it's got these kicks out so the wheels don't spin. And let's see if I can do this. Come on, come on, there we go. There we go. So this is a print in place crane, a, pl a print in place crane. It's a mouthful, I know, but it was printed on this Mark IV in the same Galaxy PLA filament, the Prusament right there. I'll put a link to this down in the description. I bought it off Colts because someone emailed me about it 
It's fascinating. I'm going to dive deeper on this model in a future episode, so be sure to stay tuned. But until then, I invite you to download this and print this on your Mark IV or on your whatever that you have. With this machine right here, I know initially Joe said I didn't need to have that. When this print was done though, and when this print was done, it went to top of Z and it did unspool a little bit. And so this, I do think is necessary. It didn't seem like it was that loud. Quality is there. There is a defect on the build plate where the nozzle touches. And I do have to try to find some more information about that. It doesn't seem to affect anything. It's incredibly tiny and it's in an area where stuff I haven't printed yet would fall. I don't think it's gonna cause an issue, but still I'll talk to Prusa about that and see what they have to say. All in all, my impressions on this machine, just with these first two prints, are positive. Now, this doesn't mean that this machine, this Mark IV from Prusa, is the one to beat and good to go because Joel said it's awesome. I've only had two prints on the machine, and lots of people out there have had Mark IV machines and have had varied experiences. Mine, so far, personally, has been positive, and I want to stress that. So far, it's been positive. Obviously, my goal here is to do lots of prints with this machine in various filaments, and I hope to continue to do that and showcase them across social media and possibly in future episodes here on the channel. If there are models you'd love to see printed on the Mark IV, tag me online, you never know, I might be able to get it done. This is really fun. I'm not traveling for a bit, so I actually get a chance to utilize this machine and kinda poke some buttons and figure out how it works and install the Alpha firmware and input shaping and, and, and have some fun with it. So if you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, and print in place all the things. And as always, high five.